Amen. This is the first of its kind to have church in your home. And I'm excited that uh, God is taking this opportunity to reach us wherever we are. Just imagine that this is the Garden of Eden in the cool of the day. God will come down and have fellowship with Adam. I, I, I believe that there's something God is up to. I don't have all the answers, but I know it's a good thing. Amen. God always turns things around for the good of them that love him and are called according to his purpose. I, I want to say this sincerely from our hearts, Pastor Chidi and I and the entire leadership. We want to thank God for every one of you. Thank God for the wonderful, committed Bethel members all over the world, all those joining us through the live stream. Thank you for connecting to the service this morning. You know I miss you so much. And I can say that with the whole of my heart that I wish you were here, but I understand. And I know that God will bring us back together soon. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Let's bow our hearts to pray as we look into God's word. Father, thank you for the power of your word. When you speak, the entire world listens. As we look into your word, we ask that you speak to our hearts, minister life to us. In this good morning Jesus service, let every word that proceeds from my mouth be the anointed word of God that you're destined for your people. Bless every heart, bless every life. Transform our destinies and let your name alone be glorified. Use this medium to do what you have never done before. And take all the glory. In Jesus name we pray. Somebody shout amen. Amen. God bless you. Turn your Bibles with me to Hebrews chapter number 11. And if you are at home, I want you to honor God by rising to your feet as we read the word of God. Even if we're at home, we need to go give God the reverence that he deserves. You're more than welcome to share the video, comment, respond like you are in church. Amen. Use this as an opportunity to reach out to someone who definitely has not been to Bethel before. But today, they have that opportunity to connect with God through Bethel today. Hebrews 11. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. The Bible says this is what the ancients were commended for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith, Abel still speaks even though he is dead. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found. Because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. My prayer is better will please God in this season. And verse 6, and without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone that comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. May God bless his word in our hearts. In Jesus name, amen. God bless you. I'll be speaking this morning on what I titled, Living by Faith. Living by Faith. Wherever you are, I want you to declare it. Say with me, living by faith. Say it again with me, living by faith. It's important to understand that God commends only believers that live by faith. God only has respect for believers that live by faith. 
So when you look through scriptures, Hebrews 11 is God's hall of fame for those who walked by faith. Yes, there are many footballers, but those that make it to the hall of fame are the people that are not just elite, but are above par. So many people may be believers, many people may confess Jesus as their Lord and Savior, many people may do great things, but the people that God has respect for are men and women of faith. So it's not good to just be good. It's not enough. It's not enough to just be a good Christian. It is proper to be a good Christian that lives by faith. So it's possible for you to just say, you know what? I'm just doing what I'm doing. I'm just trying to live my life the best way I can. If it is not done by faith, it is not commended by God. The most important scripture here amongst the very first definition telling us what faith is, is Hebrews 11 verse 6. The Bible says, and without faith. It is impossible to please God. So in these desperate times, in this crazy season that the whole world is in, you could operate in caution and still not please God. You could be so full of precaution and not matter to God. What matters in this season and who God will be looking at in this season are men and women that live by faith. Men and women that still wake up in the morning. We know it is Sunday morning. We know we cannot come to church physically, but I'm going to have respect for God by rising up 8.30. If it's 8.30 service that you use, I'm going to put myself together and I'm going to worship God uninterrupted, no matter the kind of calls that come my way. I'm going to make sure that I give God my own devoted attention. And I'm not going to slack in my obedience and commitment to God. No matter the laws that come. That is what we're talking about. That's why the Bible says, for without faith, it is impossible to please God. Why? Because any man that comes to him must believe that he is God. So God is God whether COVID-19 or no COVID-19. Because this will pass. I want to assure you, nothing will harm you or your family in this season in the name of Jesus. As you shout, Amen, I see COVID 19 pass over you by the blood of Jesus. So it's important that as we go through this season, and we know it will pass soon, somebody say it will pass soon, it will pass, it will pass. We please God in all that we do. And the way to please God is by faith. Somebody say faith, faith. Yes, because anyone that comes to him must believe that he is. And he is a rewarder. That's what I'm saying. God will be looking at your posture. God will be looking at your activities within this season. God will look at the commitment to him in this season. God will look at your fervency in the place of prayer. If you are truly an intercessor, it will show now. If you are a prayer warrior, we will know now. If you are faithful in your giving, this season would expose you. That whether it is by coming to church that you are faithful, or in the privacy of your home, when nobody sees you, you are faithful. Now listen to me. It's so easy to live for God when you are in the face of everybody. It's so easy to be a praying person when there's an organized system to pray. How about when nobody sees you from Monday to Sunday? Now, it's not like there's a Wednesday service or a Friday service or a Sunday morning service. Will you pray just like you have been praying? And check this. Despite all that, if you could do all that when there was no COVID, desperate situations require desperate measures. So God will be expecting true believers that show faith to increase their commitment and their fervency in prayers in this time. Because God says, I search for a man that will stand in the gap. That the nation be not destroyed, but I found none. So listen to this. That statement could not have been made in the time of peace. That statement could not have been made in the time when everything is okay. He said, I search for a man that will stand in the gap that the U.S. be not destroyed. Amen. I don't care what the conspiracy is. A lot of people have been talking about different conspiracy theories. This government did this, China did this. I don't care. I don't need to know what happened. I know the solution. 
Jesus is the solution to every, de every demonic conspiracy. Hear me, child of God. You don't need to know what is happening behind the scenes. You just need to know what God can do to change the situation in the front of the scene. And it takes faith to change situation. That's why the Bible says, by this, the ancients obtained a good report. So even when the situations were bleak, by faith, they changed the report. Do you know our prayers can shut the virus down? Only men of faith that see and understand the power of prayer will pray more than share the bad news from CNN. Only men of faith will ignite and say, you know what? I'm going to hold on to God. And God, if you are looking for a man that will stand in the gap, that San Antonio has no more bad news. Lord, I present myself. I will not eat. Till this bad news is over. God is counting on true believers. Let's imagine, what of if this is a test? What of if God is testing the nations and trying to see who true believers are? What of if this is an examination? Are you going to pass? What of, you know, as I was driving to church this morning, God told me, what of if this is a dress rehearsal for what rapture will look like? Will God still be able to find faith in God's people. What of if God is saying in this season, it is two weeks, but I'm going to use this as a preparation for all believers. Where everybody is on the same plane, whether unbeliever or not. And the rapture takes place five days from now. So that nobody has an undue advantage over their neighbor. If it's Friday and the people that go to church on Friday are better members. So better has an undue advantage over people that go to church on Tuesday. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying tonight? And so God says, everybody sit down. Both unbeliever and believer. And angels, get ready with your sickle to harvest. Will God still find faith? And that's why we are saying it today that if you don't have faith in God, I'm not talking about just faith to stop the fire. I'm talking about you living by faith, approaching God as the almighty God in COVID or no COVID. If God will find faith in you, only those that believe that Jesus is the son of the living God have access to eternal life. I charge you this morning, if there's a time God is looking for men and women of faith, it is now. Do you know what? After this season, God will be giving a report card to churches, to pastors, to members. There's going to be a report card. Just like in any exam, there's a result. What would your result be? When God, and I believe that one day God is, you, you cannot tell me that God doesn't know what's going on. God does. He does. Nothing happens without his knowledge. What if on that very great day, the, of all the different seasons that people are passing through, it's a unique season we are in. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a unique one. That every person all over the world, nobody can say they didn't know about COVID. Even my little boy, four years old, or five years old, knows about COVID. Knows about coronavirus. What if it's a defining moment in the destinies of men that on that day, as the God brings the report card of how you lived, he will bring the main exam. During COVID-19, Angel Gabriel presents the report and everybody, God will bring your activities during COVID-19. Will he still find faith among better members? And they say, let's look at how many times he read his Bible. He was so busy, but we made it easy for him to be at home. Did he open the Bible or not? Because to whom much is given, much is required. Did he pray? Or did he spend more time on social media? Did he fast? Did he use that medium to engage in immorality or not? Because now nobody's watching you. And now you can do whatever you want to do. If truly you are faithful when no eyes is looking at you, then you are truly faithful. Will God find faith in Bethel? That's what I'm saying. It is time to live by faith. Tell you about it's time to live by faith. Wherever you are, it's time to live by faith. Faith is absolute trust and confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the creator of the heavens and the earth. The one who died for us. And pay the price for our redemption. So you can't talk about faith if it's not connected to the almighty God. You can't talk about faith. You only call it faith when it's connected to the almighty 
to a greater power, to a deity. And of course, for us, is Jesus Christ, the Savior of our soul. Understand this, it is faith in the Lord Jesus that converts a sinner to become a saint. It is that singular act of putting our trust in the Lord that makes us to turn 180 degrees around, not 360 now, 180, to say, you know what, the things I used to do, I will do them no more, simply because I have committed my life to Jesus Christ. Every believer that is saved, there must be one major step you must take. You must confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior. It is called the confession of faith. Say with me, the confession of faith. Say it again boldly, the confession of faith. So when we talk about living by faith, it begins with your confession. Why would this be important? Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So what you believe will be expressed by your speech. A man that says they have faith and they don't believe it in their heart and confess it with their mouth cannot live by faith. What you don't confess, you cannot operate. What you don't confess, you cannot profess. So it starts with the confession of it. Romans chapter 10 and verse 9. But that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So for a man that confesses with their mouth the Lord Jesus and believes in their heart that Jesus has been raised by God from the dead, that simple confession and believing in your heart by faith gives you the access to be saved. That is where salvation begins. So if you want to say, I believe I'm a man of faith, it starts here. The journey of faith starts here. You confess with your mouth. How many of you are going to lift your hands and say, I confess with my mouth. Say it loud, I confess with my mouth. The Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead. If that is you, let me hear you shout amen wherever you are. Hear this? Without, the, without faith in the finished work of Christ on the cross, we cannot be saved. So the journey of faith, living by faith, is all hinged on Christ. So in this season, don't focus on the virus. Don't focus on what people are saying. Don't focus on the scientists. You know, a lot of people are telling, you know, I keep hearing people saying, oh, you know, you need to listen to the scientists. Ladies and gentlemen, before the scientists, God was. Yes. By the grace of God, we have many people that are scientists here. Science only researches what God has already searched. That's why it's called research. If God does not show you, you can't find it. So when people are talking about scientists, even the little drug that they said they found recently, and like I keep wondering, how do you use an anti-malaria medication to solve a viral problem? It don't make no sense. Think about it. It's almost like using a bacterial medicine to solve a virus. They have two different pathways for those of us that don't understand these things. So listen to me. The people that took it, they took overdose because they thought they wanted to do more protection. And many of them have landed back in the hospital. So that tells me that there's a limit to the works of men. When Jesus has paid it all. No wonder on the cross he said, it is finished. So Jesus has paid it all already. Lift your hands and say, Jesus has paid it all. So when we put our faith in the finished work on the cross of Calvary, then we can fully declare that we are saved. Ephesians chapter 2 declares, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not of yourselves. So we can't get salvation by our power. It is the gift of God. Not by works. Lest any man should boast. You don't boast on your salvation. It is a work that was completed by Jesus Christ. And we put in our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Gives us that access to be saved. I want to share with us four key scriptures that acknowledges the relevance and the importance of living by faith for every believer. Number one, 
Habakkuk chapter number 2. Habakkuk chapter number 2 on verse 4. The Bible says, Behold the proud. His soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by what? His faith. By his faith. Not just live by faith. By his faith. The proud person will think we're stupid. The proud person will think, what are these people talking about? The proud person will think, you know what? I'm just going to follow the facts. But the just person shall follow faith. Is somebody hearing me? Proud people follow facts. Just people follow faith. Proud people follow facts because they are putting their confidence in their knowledge. Just people follow faith because their faith is in the truth of what the word of God says. Yes, the enemy and the demons and the devil and all the people in the news media can say whatever they want to say. A million of people, one people die. Okay, I've heard it. God already told me in the word of God. A thousand shall fall at your side. It is not news. It is not news that a thousand shall fall at our side. Ten thousand on our right hand side. Ladies and gentlemen, if that moves you, you don't know Psalm 91. If that moves you, you cannot be moved by any of those news. You know why? The word of God told you before time. Nevertheless, the good news of us that live by faith is that it shall not come near me. So it doesn't matter how many people die. It doesn't matter how many people are perishing. It doesn't matter how many people that are hospitalized. Because we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. It shall not come near me. Declare it upon your life and your family. It shall not come near me. COVID shall not come near me. Disease shall not come near me. Virus shall not come near me. As you declare it, may the power of God deliver you from every coronavirus. Wherever you are, jump on your feet, wave your hand and shout hallelujah. Hey! It shall not come near me. Declare it, it shall not come. I said declare it, it shall not come near me. I live by faith. I live by faith. I live by faith. I said I live by faith. I live by faith. I don't live by CNN. I don't live by Fox News. I don't live by MSNBC. Let all men be liars. Let God be the truth. Somebody shout amen like thunder. The just shall live. By his faith. Somebody say, I will live by faith. faith. Second scripture, Romans chapter 1 and verse 17. For it, in it, the righteousness of God is revealed. From what? From faith to faith. Can you believe that? From faith to faith. For in times like this, in negative conditions like COVID-19 season, we see the righteousness of God. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? If God is truly righteous, we will know. He told us in his word. Even David said it. He said, since I was young and now I'm old, I have never seen the righteous forsaken. It is when you are not righteous that you'll be afraid. For thou shalt surround the righteous with his favor. Like a shield shall bless the righteous and surround him with favor as with a shield. So when viruses is surrounding many people, for us, it is favor that surrounds us. Oh, I love what the scripture says in Psalm 102. He said, for thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the set time to favor her. Yea, the set time has come. Can I announce to you, this is the best season of your life. This is the best season for your family. This is the best season for your ministry. This is the best season for your marriage. This is the best season for your children. If you believe it, shout amen like thunder. Thou shalt have mercy upon Zion. So hear this. For it, in it, the righteousness of God is revealed. From what? From faith to faith. So even faith have levels. We are all believers in church. <laughs> but our faith is different. 
why some people are climbing in this season from faith to faith. Some people are climbing from faith to fake. I repeat myself. In this season of COVID-19, it doesn't matter what your, your Christian title is. Some people will climb from faith to faith. That is to say, this situation will process our faith and we have greater faith. Or some people, through this situation, it will expose their faith. So you know it is from faith to fake. F-A-K-E. And if you allow the devil to play with your faith, F-A-I-T-H, you will have the devil's faith. F-A-T-E. Don't play with your faith, y'all. Look at the scripture. For the righteous shall live by faith. How many of you are going to say, I'm going to live by faith this season? Lift your hands, say it, I'm going to live by faith this season. Taught scripture, taught scripture, Galatians chapter 3 and 11. Now it is evident, now it is evident that no one is justified before God. Eh? No one is justified before God by what? By the law. So I, I've been saying it. I'm going to say it. I'm going to shout it. Call me crazy. I'm going to declare it. Obeying the law does not justify you before God. Living by faith justifies you before God. You hear me? Faith is not the denial of fact. Faith it's not letting the facts to determine how you live your life. Because you know the truth. I know the truth of God's word. It's not going to stop me from being faithful. It's not going to stop me from being giving, being loving. It's not going to stop my commitment. It's not going to stop my faithfulness, my devotion to God. It's not going to make me bitter, but it's going to make me better. The righteous shall live by faith. It is this time that God will justify his people by faith. Fourth scripture. Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7. And this is where I end. I'll catch you in the second service. And I'll tell you some things that will blow your mind concerning faith. Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7. Hear this. For we, somebody say for we. You can rise up to your feet now because you are going to express it. You are going to walk for real. Hear this. <laughs> you are going to walk for real. For we. Somebody shout for we. In your living room, wherever you are, stand with me. In your home, stand now. For we walk by what? Faith and not by sight. Every true believer that will live by faith, it must show in your walk, not in your words. It must show in your walk, not in your words. Every day in this season, hinge to the word of God. Know what God is saying in this season. Open the scriptures. Meditate upon it. Ask God. Even this morning I asked the Lord. I'm going to tell you what God told me about COVID-19 in the second service. I don't have time. I'm going to tell you. If you tune in, I'll tell you. What he told me about it. And that gave me peace. Because when you hear the word of God. Then you walk in peace. The Bible says for thou shalt keep in perfect peace. Him whose heart is stayed on him. If your heart is stayed on God. You will be at peace. If your heart is not stayed on God. You will panic. You will walk. For we walk by faith. And not by sight. I want to challenge you this season. If there is a time that God is depending on every believer. To walk by faith, it is now. If there's a time God is trusting us to obey him, it is now. If there's a time for us to go to the scriptures and live by it, to pray like never before, God is looking for men and women of faith that would encourage other people, challenge them and let them know we can overcome. 
and we have overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of our testimony. Wherever you are, stretch your hands towards me now as we begin to ask the Lord in the name of Jesus. Stretch your hand towards your screen. Ask the Lord in the name of Jesus. I connect to your word, not to me, to the God of heaven. I connect to your word. I will live by faith and not by sight. I will walk by faith and not by sight. I devote my life. In this season, I will not fail you. In this season, I will not disappoint you. In this season, my commitment will increase. In this season, when you look on earth, the word of God said, will you find faith in Israel? Lord, you will find faith in San Antonio. You will find faith all over the world. Lord, in this season, my devotion, my commitment, my faithfulness to you will never change. You will help me to live more and more for you. I will walk by faith and not by sight. I will walk by your word and not by sight. I will walk by your word but not by sight. I will obey your word. I will run away from sin. I will live a righteous life. I will be more committed to the word. I will be more prayerful. I will love my neighbor as myself. I will walk in confidence of your word. I will not be moved by the things that are happening around me. My commitment to God will be heightened in this season. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed. And somebody shout amen today. Before I wrap up this session, I'm going to ask if there's anyone hearing the sound of my voice, you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you have not made that confession. This is your time. That's the only way you can say you are walking by faith. When you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, then you can be saved. If you are here, you are watching me, you say, Pastor, pray with me. I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. Go ahead and type it into the screen. Say, I want to serve the Lord. I want to give my life to Christ. I want to be saved. Go ahead and type it. Go ahead and type it. As we'll say this prayer and just say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I come before you. I hand over my life to you. I am a sinner. I need forgiveness. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me clean with your precious blood from today i will serve you i will live for you i will obey you i will not live in sin anymore i will serve you all the days of my life i turn my life over to you i confess with my mouth i believe with my heart that god raised jesus from the dead and so i declare i am saved write my name in the book of life save me from sin in Jesus mighty name we have prayed amen lift your hands and thank the Lord as I as I close the, 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 the word today ask the Lord in the name of Jesus strengthen me at this time Father I pray for your people bless your people by the power of your word I release your words step up faith inside of us build us up strengthen us uphold us with your righteous right hand give us grace to serve you in spirit and in truth Lord this week we will walk by faith. This week we will live by faith. We will live by faith and not by sight. That will be justified before you. Bless your people. I pray God's blessings over you and your family. I pray divine protection. I pray God's guidance and favor. He will uphold you with his righteous right hand. In Jesus' mighty victorious name we have prayed. And God's people shout amen. God's people shout amen. Wave your hand and give God a shout of praise. Go ahead and package your tithe and your offering at this time as Pastor Chidi takes it. Praise the Lord. We're going to give you the time at this time to um, package your tithe and your offerings. And at the screen, we've showed you multiple ways to give. Um, you can give um, at this time through PushPay. You can give through PayPal. And you can also give through Zelle. Amen. And if you're a Bethel member, we've also sent to you on the WhatsApp more the different ways that you can give. And a prayer this time that God will find faith in you, that even though you're at your home, that you still be faithful to God to give to his house and also to present your tithes to him. The Bible says that we should bring our tithes to the house of the Lord, that there will be meat in his house. It says that prove him if he'll not open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that we will not even be able to contain and also God says that not only will he bless us, but he'll also rebuke the devourer of our sake. Amen. As we give our tithes, as we give our offerings today, God will rebuke the devourer for your sake in the name of Jesus. So at this time, we ask that you please give um, through the um, internet um, um, versions or the electronic versions 
to give your tithes and offering. And as you give today, God will bless you in the name of Jesus. Also, you can also give um, for the building of the house of the Lord at this time as well. And God will bless you in the name of Jesus. At this time, I'm going to ask you wherever you are in your home to lift up your offering in your hand as we bless the tithes and the offering. Father, we give you praise. Lord, we thank you, O oh God, for your presence. We thank you, O oh God, for this unique opportunity to give to you the King of kings and the Lord of lords as we present our tithes and as we present our offerings, as we present also our building offerings to you, O oh God. We pray that you bless them, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. I pray for every hand that is given. I pray that your windows of heaven shall be open to them, O oh God. That you bless them, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. And I also pray that you rebuke the devourer for their sake. I pray that life is our portion, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. We give you praise. We give you honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Don't stop.